let's take a look at a 1 watt Festoon lamp. Now, this is a 2 watt one that I looked at previously. This is the new 1 watt one. I have to say that compared to the 2 watt, it doesn't look half the intensity. It looks about a quarter of the intensity of that. It's much dimmer. But it does have a notable advantage. There's no flicker off this one. And this one does have a slight flicker to it. It has a slight shimmer. Uh, so let's unscrew them and plug them in individually. Well, let's just plug the, the one of interest in, which is the 1 watt. So when I plug it in, it's on. It's relatively nice, but it is a very dim, you can look at it comfortably type of filament. And the power it's drawing is 0.9 watts, uh, with a power factor of 0.5 um, and a current of 7 milliamps. And to try and work out what's, well, I'll show you what I did to try and work out what circuitry is inside. One moment, please. So the first test, well, all the tests are a don't try this at home type of thing. I've got two high power resistors here, each rated 100k. And if I put the lamp across it and it doesn't strobe, then it suggests it's just glowing there very dimly. It suggests that it's not got a switching power supply in it because they tend to strobe and flash. The next test, I shall unplug it before doing this. And once again, I'll say, don't try this yourself at home with exposed connections. It's been done like this here because it's just more suitable for the video. Uh, so I've got a diode in line now. And if this is a capacitive dropper, then it will not like having a diode in series. It will glow very dimly just with slight leakage across the discharge resistor. So if I put it in series, it's lighting fairly brightly uh, on a sort of half wave. So I don't think it's a capacitive dropper. And that kind of suggests then that it contains a linear dropper. I'm just, I've unplugged that. So I will now disconnect these weapons of mass destruction. So let's open it. It could be a linear current regulator or it might be uh, uh, just a resistor. I kind of hope it's just a resistor because that's kind of interesting when they, they corner cut to that. Oh, incidentally, this one got came from a UK seller, longlifelamps.co.uk. I'm not necessarily going to endorse it because I do note that it is massively less efficient for a one watt uh, filament. It's not bright at all. Oh, I also took a pic close up picture of it with uh, at low intensity and then uh, zoomed in the image and saw there are 24 LEDs. And given, well, we'll see what the circuitry is. This is me just nibbling away at the metal trying to get this open. I do notice from looking into it that it's not super skimped. Well, this is a plastic shell inside, which is interesting. Uh, the lamp globe is one of these type that flanges out quite quite it's very shallow it flanges out in there so there's plenty of room for circuitry and i will say this does definitely have smoothing because there's no flicker which is nice the other ones do have a bit of flicker this might not be the most efficient way of opening these but i find it's a relatively useful way of opening them i say that this one has a plastic liner inside this is interesting it kind of hints it's quite good quality actually it's like being made to a sensible standard some of the weird stuff that comes from ebay is sometimes just not a hundred percent what you'd want have i zoomed down too far no i don't think i've zoomed down too far right is this even going to come off easily this plastic dish may make things a bit more complicated there is the uh the base is coming off is that going to reveal much inside it's going to reveal the, that there's a connection in there. That's all right. We'll just keep mincing away and chopping away at the metal. Exploring lamps. And taking mine apart so you don't have to. These are quite good for the festoon because they are very low energy. They give a nice visual effect. But in this case, I think this one's too, too dim. I might actually say that of the two, maybe the two watt one was actually the better here for uh, actually casting with some useful light. Right, so the tin opening is going okay. The base has come off. Oh, there's a linear regulator by the look of it. I shall show you the picture of the circuit board because I'll take a picture of it. It's the easiest way of doing it. This foamy cement here is the stuff that is always really hard to get off. Now, do I have a pair of pliers? Yes, I do. Let's try and get this off. So there's an electrolytic capacitor. 
there's a bridge rectifier. Uh, so there's a linear regulator, right? Tell you what, I shall clean this off and we'll take a look at it. One moment, please. Before I go any further with this, let's check the voltage across the filament inside the lamp. So if I plug this in and we monitor it with the fluke, ah, the fluke, it says 129 volts across that filament, which is much higher than I was expecting for 24 chips. Let's do the calculations on the kink calculator. So that's 129 volts divided by what appears to be 24 chips is about 5.3 volts per chip divided by two gives what I'd expect, 2.7 for one chip. So each of those little chips I saw inside is actually two, possibly two LEDs in the one substrate. Um, that's interesting, right? Okay, next I'm going to actually disconnect one of the connections here and we'll measure the current that's uh, flowing through the filament. One moment, please. And resume. So plug the power in again. 2.4 milliamps. That's a lot less than I was expecting. So that means the filament is dissipating. Uh, 0 0.0, that is ridiculous. 244. Uh, so 2.4 milliamps times 129 volts equals it's 0 0.3 watts. That explains why it looks so dim. That is strange. This is possible because they're trying to take the load off that regulator, the linear regulator. How unusual. Um, so let's go further. Let's take a look at that circuit board. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So I shall zoom down onto the circuit board so we can get closer and then I'll show you the schematic. But let's take a look at the circuit board first. The main supply comes in and goes straight to the bridge rectifier with the neutral going straight onto the bridge rectifier but the live coming via this 33 ohm resistor. It's a fusible resistor, which means that it's not just limiting the inrush current to the circuit, but it's also going to act as a safety device as well. And the color code on it is orange, orange, black, 330, 33, and a zero as a decimal multiplier. So it's just 33 ohms. Once it's been rectified to DC, it charges at this little 3.3 microfarad 400 volt death beam capacitor. And there's also a one mega ohm resistor across the output of the bridge rectifier and that serves three purposes. In my case, it discharges the capacitor and stops me getting a tingle off it. It also applies a slight load so you don't get that ghosting effect that you get with LEDs because this lamp would be very sensitive to the leakage you get through the capacitive coupling between switch wires and that can make the lamp continue to glow even when it's off. The other thing it does is it will discharge this capacitor fairly rapidly so the filament doesn't just glow away, just fade away very slowly. It will go out quite decisively. The only other two components in the board are the linear regulator and its programming resistor. This is a regulator device that will limit the current and you set the current and it measures the voltage across this resistor and then when it reaches a certain level it knows that the program current is reached and it will just it will act like a variable resistor. And one of the most interesting things about this circuit board is that on the back of it, there's these three plated through holes and that's all I thought they might have put some more down here, but they've got three plated through holes. And uh, as well as having a fairly large area of copper on this side of the board, uh, this regulator also couples through and the dotted outline here is a sort of copper plane on the other side that is also designed to help dissipate the heat from this. And it turns out that the LED is dissipating 0 0.3 watts and this is dissipating 0 0.5, which is a bit disappointing. But let's bring in the schematic. I think that's everything covered in that. It is. Oh, these are square posts. The LED lamp, the wires come up from the base of the lamp through these little notches at the side and then they just uh, wire wrap around these posts. It's a fairly common way of manufacturing. It just means no extra soldering is required at that point. Here is the schematic. Let's get closer. Incoming supply, in this case 220 to 240 volts, 33 ohm resistor, the bridge rectifier, the death beam capacitor, 3.3 megafarad, 400 volts, and the one mega ohm resistor. Now, earlier I mentioned that we have roughly 340 volt DC on that capacitor. That's because the mains voltage, in our case, is say 240 volts. That's the RMS value, root mean square. That's the average value of the sine wave, the peak. Multiply that by 1.41, and that will give you 
uh, about 338 volts. It'll actually waver up and down. It can be quite high in the UK. I shall put the kink calculator out of the way. There's a the 1 meg ohm load and discharge resistor. And then we've got the LED chips. And it's quite interesting. It is like each chip is two chips. So it's effectively 40 LEDs. And the current being passed is 2.44 milliamp, as we saw earlier. The chip has the number 82GA on it. The closest I could find to that, it's kind of like it's also got uh, it's also got lettering on it. It says IBM IRAJ. And that doesn't really call up anything. It might be a manufacturing code. But the closest I could find as an example is an SM2082B, which is very similar. And as I say, that's dissipating 0.5 watt, which is a shame because if they'd put two of those LEDs in series, the voltage is ample because it's about, was it about 120 volts across those? I think it was 120 volts, um, with the rest being dropped across here, say about 220 volts. So they could easily have run two of those filaments in series um, with this, just with the same values, and it would have doubled the light output for the same amount of power. Anyway... I decided that since it's dropping such a high voltage and normally if you drop a very low voltage, say for instance you put a resistor in and the voltage across it was quite low, any mains fluctuation would result in intensity variation. The current would modulate through the LEDs and when people turn things on, the lights would dip and things like that. So this uh, helps prevent that by providing the linear uh, regulated current. But I thought it'd be interesting putting a resistor across there because with such a high voltage, over 200 volts across it, it will effectively not really matter too much. It won't affect the current too much with a voltage variation. So what I've done is this. Let me just show you the doodle first, then I'll show you the thing. So I've got the a 10 ohm resistor just because it's what I had. Oh, look at me just drawing this so hastily. Bridge wrecked far very hastily. This is high speed drawing. The other terminal comes in here, AC plus minus. I've got the two connections coming out. I've got the capacitor. In this case, 4.7 megafarad, just because it's what I had, 4.7. And it is a death beam capacitor, 400 volts, as used in 5G lampposts to blow people's brains out remotely, apparently, according to weapons experts. Not. Uh, I'm not even going to point to that guy's website. It's a conspiracist. Uh, but this time... I've got the LED and I'm just going to put a chain of resistors in series. In reality, uh, I could use a single resistor rated, say, it's going to dissipate half a watt. It could be one watt, roughly about 80k. What I've actually used is uh, four resistors, uh, four times 18k, uh, quarter watt. So let's bring in the circuitry and I'll show you it working. This is going to actually result in slightly higher current through the LEDs, but not that too dramatically. Here's my dangerous cobbled setup. Here's the lamp, which I've put some wires into and put some resin in to protect it from my twisting of the wires. The power supply is just made from discrete components soldered together, just all bare and live. Yeah, not, not great, but uh, it's fine. Uh, this is prototyping. 10 ohm resistor, the bridge rectifier just cobbled out of one N4007 diodes. The uh, discharge resistor, the 1 meg ohm discharge resistor and load resistor, the capacitor here, and then the four resistors in series with the lamp. And if I plug it in, let me just zoom out a bit here. If I plug it in, there is the lamp lit. Nice golden colour. It, a, a, it is a warm colour temperature, that lamp. Uh, it's now just fractionally over a watt. It's gone to 8 milliamps. Power factor is still 0.5. That's because of the capacitor, because the current's uh, only really being drawn at the sort of peak of the sine wave. Um, and it would be interesting measuring the voltage across those. Well, let's measure the voltage across the lamp, which is probably still going to be in the region of 120 volts. Let's just zoom out here because, we're, yeah, I'm working in a smaller area now. There we go. Let's keep my fingers away from the juicy bit so I don't get zapped. Uh, the voltage across the lamp is 128 volts, say 130 volts. The voltage across each pair of resistors, get a connection, it's about 102 volts. So I can work out the dissipation. Um, 
let me grab the kink calculator and move this to the side. I'll show you it lit. So that's 102 volts, so it's 204 volts being dropped across the resistor. The current is going to be 204 volts divided by the combined value of those resistors. I should have calculated that first. 18k times 4 equals, so 72k. So, two hundred was that 204 volts divided by 72k equals... The current is now uh, 2.8 milliamps times the 202, I think it was, uh, two, I think it was 204, but it doesn't matter, it's very close, equals, the dissipation is about 0.6 watts divided by the four resistors, it's 0.143 watts each, so uh, less than, uh, almost half the rating, I should tilt this up so you can actually see it. So you could just use the same surface mount circuit board, but you could actually, in place of the this, you could actually just have had a little cluster of resistors there and it would have achieved the same thing. Likewise, uh, you could have used the two filaments still, but at that point the voltage being dropped across the resistors would be more critical. You're more likely to get a slight fluctuation. But that is it. It's a nice enough lamp. It is that warm golden colour temperature which also impacts the intensity. Kind of like it. This is notably just a bit brighter actually because of my circuitry here, but only because it's driving at higher current and still maintaining roughly a watt. Uh, but that is it. Uh, it's a nice lamp. Very simple circuitry and uh, it does the job nicely. Also quite pleasing hacking it up with a bit of uh, my own DIY circuitry to see if it could be done with resistors. I know there are some lamps, well, like this one, that do actually use Resistors, uh, I've added more resistors on the outside to test this, but um, they actually just use a resistor in the base and crudely they don't, they use uh, LEDs for bridge rectification, which is a bit naughty. Those lamps tend to fail a lot, that's probably why. But that's it. This is a, a nice lamp.